Once I've finished running through my analyses, I might want to go back and make modifications to my board. To do that, I would just open the layer viewer again over here by double clicking on layers to bring up the layer viewer of my model here. To edit my board, I can go up to the edit menu here and you can see in this edit dropdown that there are plenty of entities related to the board that I can edit. For instance, if I select edit components, I can go through and edit my components on the board. If I wanted to edit this component right here, I can right click on it and this context menu pops out, which allows me to view the properties of the particular component itself, as well as actually going through and editing the properties on that particular component directly from the layer viewer. I can also do such things as moving the part. So I can move my part on the board. I can also scale my part, where I can click on one of these corners here and change its size. I can rotate my part, uh, copy it, to instance it somewhere else on the board or delete it altogether. What I can also do in the edit components mode is also edit multiple components at once. So for instance, if I turn my solder mask on here, I can see that this bank of resistors on the right here has been brought in, but it has been brought in 90 degrees to how it should sit. So if I wanted to rotate all of these guys 90 degrees, instead of doing it individually, I can do them all at once. To do that, I will click and hold the shift key. Once I'm in edit components and click and drag over all of these resistors. You can see that Sherlock has highlighted all the resistors here. What I can now do is just right click on one of them, select rotate by 90 degrees, and you can see they all rotate by 90 degrees. I can hit save and apply, and that will apply those modifications to my board. And you can see now that they've been rotated. What I can also do in the layer viewer is filter my components. So if there are many components on the screen and it's hard to find the component I'm looking for, I can use these filters in the bottom left here. I can filter by part size. So I can type in here and say, I only want to see parts that are above a particular size. So let's say I put five in here and hit enter. You can see now that all the little resistors here are not shown because they are smaller than this five, this value of five that I've inputted. To bring them all back, I've just put zero, hit enter, and you can see all the components of all sizes comes back to my screen. I can also filter my holes by hole size. So for the drill holes and the mount holes, I can filter them as well. I can filter by labels. So let's say I just want to look at all of my capacitors. I can put C in there, and you can see it filters by label and only the components that are capacitors that have a C label will appear. I can blank out that field, hit enter, and everything will come back. I can also filter by package, by part number, as well as part type also. Make sure you clear these filters every time you finish using them because they will stay persistent. And if you come back into the layer viewer next time, you might get a little fright if you see that uh, you're missing parts, which are just being hidden by the filters. The next thing I'm going to modify and edit uh, is my board outline. So I can actually change my board outline. If I click on this, you can see that now I'm in the board outline editor down the bottom here. The board outline by default is just this bounding box, this rectangle here. But I can edit that and you can see it goes red. I can click on a vertice and change where that sits as well as add more vertices by holding down my shift key and clicking to add a more complex shape here, as you can see. If I hit reset, it'll go back to the original board outline. I can also draw my outline from scratch as well if I click that. And then I can just click on my screen and it'll place points on my screen and I can create an irregular shape if I wish for my board outline. I don't have to close the shape itself. Once I get to the last point there, I can right click and Sherlock will automatically close that shape for me. And as you can see now, my board outline is this blue polygon that I have. Once again, if I hit reset, it'll reset to the original bounding box that we have there. And I can close out. And I can also edit my mount points. So if I click my mount points here, you'll see if I turn on my drill file, you'll see that all of the holes that were ready from the drill file appear in gray. But Sherlock goes a step further and looks at all of the large drill holes and determines them to be mount points. So you can see the ones that are black are the mount points that I have here. 
if Sherlock has overestimated, which in this case I'd only have a mount point one in each corner, but Sherlock's picked up some extra holes, I can always delete a mount point by right clicking on it and going to delete mount point, and that deletes that mount point there. So I can do that for these extra ones. And now I'm left with just the four in each corner. I can also modify my mount points or edit my mount points individually by right clicking and ed editing properties, or I can hold down shift, do a box drag over all of my mount points, and you can see we select all four of them in one, in one go. I can then right click, edit properties, and we can edit the mount points together. In the edit window here, we have our mount point type. So at the moment, they're a mount hole, which means that when the model is meshed, we'll have a circular feature here with all the circular nodes constrained. I can also change it to a mount pad, for instance, which allows me to create a, a little pad here. Um, the boundary condition will be slightly different because the constraint nodes will be at the bottom of the pad and then I would apply a material to this mount pad as well as defining a height. I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna give it a height of five, and then I'm gonna use an aluminum mount pad for this case. You can see I can also change my mount point uh, shape as well. At the moment it's a circular mount pad. I can change that to rectangular and I can edit the size of that rectangle. Once I click save, you can see that my mount points have been uh, changed here. I can also recreate uh, any existing mount points that I deleted um, based off these holes here. If I hold shift and click on the hole, you can see this mount points directly uh, created again. And if I right click on edit properties, you'll see that its location cannot be edited because it's bound to that drill hole that's there. At any given point, I can also create a mount point on my own. By right clicking on any of the empty space, I can select add mount point. And once again, I can fill out this form here. To create a mount point for, for a new mount point for me. And then I can move that around and place that wherever I wish. It's going to turn my components on to make sure that I'm not placing this anywhere on a component. And I'll just place it right here in the middle of the board. I'll apply and close out of that. As you can see, there are many, many entities that we can create on our board here. I'm not going to go into all of them, but if you have any uh, questions, or any concerns about creating any of them, all of the information is available through our user guide. So if I go to my main Sherlock window and go to help user guide here, you'll see that we have individual user guides for creating things like heat sinks, wire bonds, potting, uh, mechanical parts, mount points and fixtures has its own one as well. So you can always click on that and work your way through this example that's in here um, and all the options are detailed and described. If I go back to my layer viewer, the last thing that I'm going to create uh, is some cutouts on my board. If I go down to edit cutouts, we go into our cutout editor. I currently don't have any cutouts on my board, so I can create a new one by right clicking edit cutout. And once again in the cutout, I can edit my cutout shape here, so I can choose its shape, its size, its location. If I click save, you can see the cutouts created here now. I can right click and edit those properties again, or I can right click and move scale and rotate this cutout. I can even copy the cutouts, I can have two cutouts here. Let's move this one down. I'll create a new cutout over here as well. Instead of doing rectangle, I can do uh, make it a polygon, click save. A window will come up to tell me how to create that. So it says use shift and left click to select points that define the cutout. At minimum, three points is required. So much like editing my board outline, I can hold shift and click to create my cutout. Right click to close the cutout. And you can see here that I've created a cutout here. And I can also click and move this cutout around. I can shift click to add a new vertice point that I can move around, or I can control click on a vertice point to delete that vertice point and the shape will change uh, to reflect my vertices there. Once I'm happy with that cutout, I can save and hit apply and you can see this cutout has now been created on my board. Lastly, what I'm gonna do is just view the changes that I've made. 
So I'm going to close out of the layer viewer, go into my main Sherlock window, and I'll go to a mechanical analysis type such as natural frequency. I can right click on that, go to generate 3D model, uh, make sure that I'm modeling my mount point so that I can actually see them and any other features that I've created. I can turn this view generated model uh, option on, which means that once the model generated, it will automatically pop up for me. Click save and it generates the model and pops it up in the Sherlock 3D viewer for me. And now my model's been created. And as you can see, the mount points that I created are here on the bottom, including the center one that I created from scratch, and those cutouts that I created are also on the board also as well. So you can see I can very quickly edit my board, move components around, change their location and size, uh, and generate a 3D model to view what that board is actually going to look like. If when I created and generated the 3D model, I didn't select this option here to view generated model, it wouldn't automatically pop up. But what I can always do is right click again and say view 3D model here. And if a model has been created, Sherlock will bring that up for me. And once again, you see my model has been created here. So that's a quick introduction to Sherlock at a basic level. Um, as you begin using it, then you may have questions. Those can be answered in the user guide, or you can contact us here at DFR Solutions for assistance. Thank you for your time.